Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Palmason. I am a clinical hematologist and I'm also active in the Iceland screens, treats or prevents multiple myeloma study group. I want to present for you our abstract called SARS-CoV-2 vaccination do not lead to progression of monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, results from the population-based ISTOP MM screening study. As all of you know, the current SARS-CoV-2 pandemic has wreaked havoc across the world over the past three years, with over 600 million confirmed cases and 6.5 million deaths. It is still widespread, but cases have gone down worldwide in the past few months, which might be related to increased vaccination coverage, but also less testing compared to earlier. Vaccination against SARS-CoV-2 started in December of 2020 and reached its peak in the summer of 2021, with around 40 million doses administered worldwide on a weekly basis. In total, nearly 13 billion vaccine doses have been administered and nearly 70% of the worldwide population have received at least one dose, but large discrepancies are seen in vaccination coverage between high and low income countries. The most common vaccine used until now is the Pfizer vaccine with around 5 billion doses given, followed by Moderna and AstraZeneca. Iceland started early vaccinating against the SARS-CoV-2 virus and all vaccinations are centrally registered there. The vaccination campaign was quite successful and currently 82% of the whole population aged five years and older are now fully vaccinated. Here we see a chart of the vaccination coverage in different age categories in Iceland. And we can see that nearly everybody in the older categories have been vaccinated and many have received booster doses. So how do vaccines elicit immunity to the SARS-CoV-2 virus? Here we have a simplified picture of two different vaccine vectors, the mRNA and the adenoviral vaccine vector. After injection, the vaccine is taken up by the dendritic cells, which in turn produce high level of the immunogenic spike protein or the S protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Intrinsic adjuvant activity of the vaccine triggers type 1 interferon and multiple pro-inflammatory cytokines, which then activate the dendritic cell, which in turn activates naive T cells. In humoral immunity, some of the T cells differentiate into T follicular helper cells, which help the B cells to differentiate into the crucial plasma cell, which produces high affinity spike antibodies. Because of this plasma cell stimulation, questions have been raised if vaccines can trigger the malignant plasma cell clone to progress, a side effect which might worry individuals with MCUS. So does SARS-CoV-2 vaccination impact the risk of progression from MCUS to multiple myeloma? Well, little is known about this subject and also how vaccines in general influence MCUS development over time. The ISTOP MM study is a large prospective population based screening study for MGUS in Iceland, where just over 50% of the population aged 40 years and older were included, and the vast majority were sampled at a later time point. The study identified 3,460 individuals with MGUS, and these individuals were then enrolled in a randomized controlled trial with respect to follow up with three arms, where arms two and three underwent follow up testing and they comprise the study cohort here. So how can we estimate if SARS-CoV-2 vaccination impacts progression of MGUS? For obvious reason, we cannot randomly assign the study participants into two groups, vaccinated versus unvaccinated, and follow them up long term. Here we define MGUS progression as a significant elevation of the M protein after vaccination compared to that before. So now I want to explain a little to you what we did to estimate these effects. In the ISTOP MM study, M protein is measured repeatedly, and here we define the vaccination status at each measurement, that is before or after vaccination, the number of doses, type of vaccine used, and different vaccine combination. As this data is longitudinal in nature, regular linear regression analysis are insufficient, and that is why we use linear mixed models to analyze the effect of SARS-CoV-2 vaccination on the level of the M protein over time. The model included patient-specific intercept and slope, allowing for estimation of individual trajectory of the M protein over time. Our study population was comprised of 1,814 individuals with MGUS, and we had in total over 6,000 serum samples available. The median age at first vaccination was 71 years, and 54% were male. 
The median follow-up in the whole study was 2.3 years. That is in the whole study, not just after the vaccination. And all subjects had at least one M protein measurement after receiving at least a single dose of vaccine with a median time between vaccination and blood sampling of 11 weeks. 99% of individuals received at least two doses of the vaccines. If we now look at the patient demographics in the study, we can see that this is mostly individuals over the age of 60, which is not strange, keeping in mind that we know MGUS prevalence increases with age, and SARS-CoV-2 vaccination will prioritize to the elderly population in the beginning of the pandemic. The median M protein at study inclusion was 0.55 grams, and Pfizer was the most commonly used vaccine, followed by AstraZeneca. Moderna and Janssen were used much less. So now we look at our main findings. We analyzed these individuals longitudinally, and we saw a yearly increase of M protein of 1.9% in male and 0.3% in female. This is shown with a red line on the graph with the M protein value at the Y axis and age at sampling at the X axis. As we can see, the M protein has a tendency to be higher with increasing age. The gray area is the confidence interval. Now I have superimposed the graph with a line representing the evolution of the M protein after vaccination. This is the blue line and there is no difference between the two lines. This is under the whole study period and not only after the vaccination. We also show here a table with exponentiated beta coefficients with confidence interval showing the same results. That is no difference in the M protein after vaccination compared to before. We also evaluated the predicted difference in the level of M protein after one versus two vaccine doses. Again, we have M protein value on the Y axis and age at sampling on the X axis. And the red line represents the baseline, that is before vaccination. And there, of course, we have no predicted difference. It's the baseline. The blue line represents the predicted difference in M protein size after vaccination. And again, we can see no difference in the M protein values irrespective of age. We do not show a graph with three vaccine doses because few individuals had received three doses in this period. And we also show the exponential data coefficient before vaccination compared to those one, two, and three, showing no difference. We also evaluated the adjusted predictive difference in M protein before and after different vaccines. And there again, we have the M protein value on the Y axis and AIDS at sampling on the X axis. And the red line represents the baseline, that is before vaccination, and blue line, the predicted difference after vaccination. So if we look at the Pfizer cohort divided by males and females and compare the baseline to the predicted difference, we see no difference. We observe the same in AstraZeneca, Moderna, and the Janssen vaccine. The larger confidence interval in Moderna and Janssen represent only that these vaccines were used much less in this study compared to that of Pfizer or AstraZeneca. And again, a table showing the exponential beta coefficient with 95% confidence interval from our mixed modeling. So we conclude that in this large prospective population-based ISTOP MM screening study, including 1,814 individuals with MGUS who were observed before and after SARS-CoV-2 vaccination, that we found no evidence for MGUS progression after vaccination. Same was true when analyzed separately by sex, age, type of vaccine, and the number of doses given. Our findings indicate that SARS-CoV-2 vaccination is safe in individuals with MGUS and does not lead to progression, irrespective of the number of vaccine doses administered and type of vaccine used. So thank you.